Hello, my name is Tom Wheeler, and I work at Temporal Technologies. During this talk, you'll learn about the concept of durable execution and how it changes the way that platform developers approach their work. I think that durable execution is one of the biggest innovations in software development, but it's not that widely known yet because it's mostly behind the scenes. It's the foundation for applications used by tens of millions of people every day, but those people don't know they're using it. Durable execution is what makes those applications more reliable, faster to develop, and easier to maintain. And in this talk, I'll take you behind the scenes so you can see what durable execution is and understand why it matters. Let's get started. I think the best way to explain durable execution is to examine the relationship between the code you write and what happens at runtime. I'll do that with a basic program in Python. It counts from 1 to 5, but does so using letters instead of numbers. Don't worry if you're not a Python developer. In a moment, I'll explain this code line by line, and later, show what happens when it crashes. As developers, we spend a lot of time thinking about the code we write. In the end, it's just a set of instructions that describe steps for achieving a goal. To make an analogy, it's like sheet music. The music you see here isn't a concert. It doesn't make a sound. You'll only hear what the composer intended when the musicians pick up their instruments and execute these instructions. The same is true for code. It doesn't matter whether I type the code into the computer or write it down with pen and paper. It's just a set of instructions that does nothing by itself. Achieving the goal requires execution. Execution is what brings the code to life. Let's look at what happens when we execute this code. The operating system creates a process, giving it an ID that distinguishes it from all the others running on that machine. And since the operating system controls the underlying hardware, it allocates the resources required for execution, such as memory and processor time. I'll now step through the code as it runs. The very first line is a comment, which the computer ignores. The next line, which I've highlighted here, defines a variable called letters and assigns it a value, which is a string containing letters of the alphabet. The next two blocks of code define a couple of functions. They only get executed when something calls them, so I'll skip them for now. The last line of the program calls the count with letters function, passing it a value of 5. Execution continues by running that function. Since it was called with a value of 5, it will output a sequence of 5 letters. A, B, C, D, and E. The program declares a variable that keeps track of the count. Its value is initially zero, but will change as the program runs. The laptop screen on the right will show its current value and the output from this program as I step through the code. Now it reaches a while loop, evaluating whether the program has counted to five yet. Since the counter is zero, it enters that loop. Here's the other function call, which passes the current count as a parameter and assigns the result to a variable called letter. It just retrieves the letter of the alphabet corresponding to that number, and it does so by using that number as an index within the string of letters defined at the top. In this case, the value is zero, so it's going to return the first letter, which is A. Control now returns to the original function, which prints that letter to the screen, and then increments the counter from zero to one. Since the counter value is less than 5, it enters the loop again. It calls the other function again, and it returns another letter, b, which the program now displays. It increments the counter again, which now has a value of 2, so we'll do another iteration. Uh oh, maybe we won't. Something went wrong here. The process terminated, which means that this execution has unexpectedly come to an end. What happened? Well, there's several possibilities. Maybe the application crashed. There might be a bug or unhandled exception in the application code. It might also be a problem in a library dependency or in the Python interpreter. The process would also terminate if the operating system crashed. Maybe someone applied a security patch at just the wrong time, causing the machine to reboot before execution completed. Or maybe the machine lost power and shut down. Perhaps a fan inside the computer stopped working causing the processor to overheat, and now we've got a hardware failure on our hands. Regardless of the reason, the outcome is the same. We've lost the application state. The value of all the variables that were updated as the program ran. We also lost our progress, so we don't know exactly what is already completed, nor what's left to do. If we try to recover from the crash by restarting the application, it's going to repeat previously completed 
steps. That's not only inefficient, but for many applications, it can be dangerous. If you've ever been charged twice for a single purchase or gotten duplicate confirmation emails, well, both of those problems and a whole lot of other ones can result from what I just described. And so a transformation begins. The engineer who discovered the joy of seeing the program run now experiences the pain of watching it fail. It's a paradox. Execution is what brought this code to life, but it also introduced the possibility of failure. Late night pages, production problems, and post-mortem reports all change how we see the world. Gaining more experience, we try to learn from each incident. And over time, we get better at anticipating nearly everything that might go wrong and then learning to design applications defensively, hopefully avoiding those problems. As our careers progress, we might lose the joy we once had when writing code. That's because we wear the scars of surprise edge cases, production problems, and all of the complexity it takes to build reliable applications in an unreliable world. In short, we spend more time focused on the problems than we do the actual goal. I'll now define what I mean by durable execution. Durable execution is crash-proof execution. I like this for three reasons. It's memorable, it's easy to understand, and it's a good way of looking at it. Describing something as crash-proof doesn't mean that a crash isn't possible, it means that a crash has no consequence. To make an analogy, I have a waterproof watch. It doesn't prevent me from falling into a pool, but even if that happens, my watch is guaranteed to continue working. Durable execution is made possible by an abstraction that insulate code from crashes, enabling applications to continue running despite them. This abstraction is provided by a system known as a durable execution platform, such as Temporal. In Temporal, and most other durable execution platforms, this abstraction is known as a workflow. The code within a workflow is crash-proof. Durable execution is easiest to grasp when you begin by looking at what happens without it. Let's revisit that earlier example, and instead of stepping through the code again, I'll use graphics to illustrate how it's affected by a crash. After that, I'll repeat the scenario with durable execution so you can see how it survives the crash. First, the operating system creates a process and the code starts running within it. The program outputs the first in the sequence of five letters, followed by the second. And now, for any of the reasons I described earlier, the program just crashed. When the process terminates, the execution is over. This is the end of the story. The underlying problem here is that a normal execution is bound to a single process, running on a single machine. Durable execution virtualizes this, enabling execution to take place across a series of processes, each of which can potentially run on a different machine than the one before. This provides fault tolerance for the application, enabling it to overcome both software defects and hardware failures. Now I'll show you the same scenario with durable execution. A new process starts up and execution begins within it, just like before. Here's the first letter in the sequence, followed by the second. And it crashes, just like before. The process has terminated here, but because we have durable execution, this is not the end of the story. Durable execution guarantees that the execution will continue with what comes next. The durable execution platform ensures that the work transparently resumes in a new process. The application state is automatically reconstructed in that new process so that variables have the same values as they did at the time of the crash. And the application will then continue running right from where it left off. It doesn't repeat the steps that it already completed before the crash. Now, let's say that the execution makes it just one step further and then crashes again. And this time, let's say that the process terminated due to hardware failure. In this case, execution will continue in a new process on a different machine. Once again, the application state within that new process is the same as it was before the crash, and execution continues with the next step. The application now achieves its goal by running the final step. The execution is now completed successfully. Here's the takeaway. Durable execution virtualizes the execution allowing incremental progress across a series of processes, potentially spanning multiple machines over time. Durable execution is the bridge that ties those processes together, enabling applications to complete their goal no matter what happens. With durable execution, the physical representation of what took place is below the line. It's true that this execution spanned three different processes across two different machines. 
But practically speaking, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the developer experiences the logical representation where these crashes had no consequence. From the developer's perspective, it's as if they never even happened. And that enables a profound change in how you approach your work as an engineer. Think about how much of the code you write is devoted to dealing with the possibility of a crash or failure or recovering when one does happen. Now imagine how much simpler things would be if you didn't have to write, test, debug, and maintain all of that code. Imagine how much easier things would be if you could just focus on what your code needs to achieve instead of the problems it might face along the way. What you're imagining is durable execution. One important characteristic of durable execution is that it's not limited by time. Because durable execution enables an application to withstand crashes, it enables an application to run for as long as it takes to achieve its goal. It may sound absurd at first, but durable execution enables you to implement a long-running business process, like a loan or subscription, using a for loop and a sleep statement, even if it takes years or even decades to complete. The fact that durable execution has no inherent time limits also allows you to create applications that run in perpetuity. In the world of durable execution, a program doesn't need to have a defined ending point. This enables you to build applications that represent long-lived entities, such as customers or accounts, as well as the business processes that interact with them. It also diminishes the need to manually preserve application state. When a program crashes and you don't have the benefit of durable execution, you lose the application state. In fact, this is one of the main reasons that developers use an application database. It provides a safe place for the data generated by a program to live when that program's not running. But in many cases, using a database isn't the actual goal. It's just a defense mechanism to guard against a crash. Developers write a lot of code to copy values from applications and store them into a database, only to load them from the database again later and update the values in the programs. And because this is tiresome, we might use an object relational mapping tool to make it just a little bit less tedious. But you know what's even easier? Not having to do it in the first place. Durable execution is crash-proof execution, which means that application state will survive a crash. Durable execution doesn't require any specific hardware to achieve fault tolerance. For many years, reliable systems emphasized fault tolerance through hardware, in some cases favoring very expensive machines with hot swappable CPUs or memory. Fault tolerant hardware may reduce the likelihood of failure, but it can never eliminate it. And consequently, execution will terminate when a failure does occur. Furthermore, hardware-based fault tolerance offers no protection against crashes caused by software defects, whether in the application itself or some other part of the stack. Conversely, durable execution builds reliability into the software, yet it enables applications to withstand a crash caused by hardware failure as well as software defects. And speaking of software defects, the example I've been using has one. I wonder if you spotted it earlier. Here it is. The application will crash if the number passed to the function exceeds the size of the alphabet. That's because it selects a letter based on its position in the string at the top. The fix I've highlighted here prevents it from going out of bounds. Luckily, many durable execution platforms, including Temporal, support the ability to deploy updates to executions in progress. That means I could fix this bug live in production. When I deploy the change, the execution will resume from where the crash occurred. And since it will resume using the code that contains my bug fix, it will then go on to complete successfully. And that brings me to the conclusion. I think there's three key reasons to love durable execution. First, it makes your applications more reliable. Because it eliminates the need to write complex code for error handling and state management, you'll have less code to write, test, and debug. That lets you ship even faster, and it frees you up to spend your time writing code that's more interesting and more valuable. Finally, it makes your code simpler and easier to understand because you'll be able to focus on the goal instead of the potential problems. Simpler code means there's fewer places for bugs to hide, so you can deploy with confidence. Durable execution is crash-proof execution. It's a simple definition with profound implications. Crashes, failures, and outages are inevitable, but they don't have to be disruptive. A durable execution platform, such as Temporal, enables you to create software that's more reliable, faster to develop, and less work to maintain. Thank you for your time and attention. I'm Tom Wheeler. Goodbye.